Welcome to More Than Golf. This is Jonathan Knowles. It's great to have you with me in Season 1, Episode 8. In this episode, Steve Gold explains ground reaction forces with the use of the GASP System 3D force plates and how you can use them to gain higher clubhead speeds. PGA professional and golf technology expert, I would like to introduce you to my good friend, Steve Gold. Thank you, Steve, for joining me today. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to sit and discuss uh, what you have to, to discuss with us about uh, GASP systems and the 3D force plates. Uh, could you please give a short introduction about yourself and GASP systems, please? Certainly, and pleasure to chat as always, Jonathan. Um, so. For me personally, uh, I'm, I'm a golf coach I'm, by trade, so I've been a, a golf pro now for more years than I can probably remember. So that's probably around the 30, 30 mark, if not, if not a little more. Um, uh, and we've had a technology company um, for around about 25 years now. So that's we started Gasp Systems at that point, primarily uh, doing video capture. And, and as time has gone by, we've added more and more integration with market-leading technology in the launch and monitor department. And... In the recent sort of five or six years, we've been developing um, a, a ground reaction force system. So it, combining um, two force plates, um, measuring 3D ground reaction force. So that's not just the vertical movement up and down, the side to side movement from right to left, and then the heel to toe movement horizontally as well. And then we can measure torque. So the rotational force you're, you're generating in the ground um, and then we sell you know the systems worldwide so we have quite a number of tour players using the system so Bryson DeChambeau is one of them he's been using the system for about a year with his coach Chris Comer um, and then uh, the likes of Mark Blackburn and his players um, so Max Homer uh, obviously he's had a tour win this year in the States and Charlie Hoffman who came close last week so finished second They've, they've been using our system along with their coaches. And from a coach's perspective, it's, it's putting some real numbers on ground reaction force and then how that affects swing mechanics and helps to generate a little bit more power. And then we're linking in these other products, which tells us about club head speed and body movement as well. So we, can, we get a full picture from ground reaction force through body movement and then, of course, how it affects the club. Excellent. That's wonderful. Now, Steve, there is a bit of a difference between uh, the 3D force plates and the pressure plates that we've seen in the industry in the last few years. Could you please explain the difference between the two? Sure. And we use pressure plates to the day or pressure mats. So we, we integrate with, with both types of technology. Um, there are limitations between what a pressure mat can do or a pressure plate can do. And what it can measure. So a pressure plate uh, and a pressure mat have many force cells in them, but and they measure a, a relatively low tolerance in terms of newton weight. So an example, a, a pressure mat might have anything between 100 and 250 small force sensors in, but they those sensors only measure uh, a relatively light amount of force. So or a low amount of force, so, so maybe around the 80 Newton mark. And to give you an idea, you know, I'm sort of 90 kilograms, so that would be 9,000 Newtons approximately. Okay, so even though you get some valuable vertical force information from a pressure mat and the center of pressure in a goal swing is an important thing, but it is just one element. There are, there are many other factors. Um, the center of pressure is really is how much force is underneath your right foot between how much force is underneath your left foot. And then that gives you an average position and your center of pressure. So if there was a hundred percent of pressure underneath your right foot, then the center of pressure is all the way to the right. And you could say the same about the left. If there was 66% on one foot, 60, 633 on the other, then the center of pressure would be halfway between the center of your stance and that particular foot. So, so center of pressure is really what pressure plates are measuring. They're calculating vertical force by adding up the force on the area, but it's still really pressure and not force. So a lot of people make you know, um, the mistake of thinking a pressure system 
measure measures force it doesn't it, it can it measures pressure measures pressure it's force over an area rather than direct force so that's a big difference and it's only doing it in a vertical way whereas a 3d plate is measuring vertical force true vertical force not necessarily over an area and then if you have a dual system it'll it's the combination the of the individual feet and their movement but also the horizontal movement which is uh, far less understood by many coaches and players uh, and, and that has a big influence on how much energy you can produce and move out to the club so there's the difference between the two and of course you know pressure plates pressure mats three thousand to six thousand pounds and then 3d force plates well you're up into the sort of around the twenty thousand pound mark wow that's quite a difference now steve what exactly are ground reaction forces well we use you use gravity in in terms of um generating a force so there's there's always an acceleration pulling you down so it's 10 meters per second gravity so or 9.81 if you want to be exact but 10 is probably good enough for this conversation um and muscle contraction as you create movement you create a muscle contraction and then you push or pull against the ground okay and that then causes an opposite reaction so if we think of mr newton's um third law every action has an equal and opposite reaction so if you push into the floor okay so that would be an action the ground's reaction force would work in the other direction it would have an effect of pushing you up so the more you push down for example the more the ground reaction force pushes up. And that's the thing that causes the motion of any movement you make in a goal swing or of any movement at all for that matter. So if you see a movement, a force is, or a force has been created. And if you see a rotational movement, a torque is being created. Okay, so, so it's force and torque before you see a movement. That's, a, that's an important concept to always think about. And that's Newton's... First law and Newton's third law. Very, very interesting. Uh, Steve, what makes the GASP system 3D force plates so unique? I think the one thing that you have to understand to measure ground reaction force and how much energy you're putting into the swing, you need to know where your weight is, okay, or your center of mass. If you apply a force straight through your center of mass, it will just move in a linear direction, okay? If you apply a force um, away from the center of mass, then it's gonna create a rotational movement, okay? So knowing where your center of mass is, is vital because the thing that you really need to know is how much torque you're producing in a golf swing. Um, we don't really move off the spot playing golf, you know, we're, we're pretty, you know, pretty stable in terms of right, left, and front and back, even though we're creating these forces, we're not, we're not really moving off the spot. We're not running at it. You know, you're just standing in one place primarily. So the forces that you're generating are not so much the linear movements, but the rotational forces. So the pelvis is rotating. If you think about it, the torso is rotating, the arms are rotating, the hands are rotating, the club's rotating, but it doesn't rotate just around the body. It also rotates like a windmill would work. So, you know, from a front-on point of view, a wind will rotate in a vertical direction. And then, of course, there's a vertical element to a golf swing. You know, the club is moving up, but at the same time, it's moving around. So we could say that more of a plane of about 45 degrees would be a, a good a good sort of thing to think about. Uh, and there's a horizontal element that, and, a, and a vertical. So we're not really using linear forces to move off the spot. We are using those linear forces, however, you know, because we apply them away from the center of mass, then it will create more rotation for us. And, and that's got to be a good thing for golf. Excellent. Excellent. Now, there's a unique addition to the software of the 3D force plates in the torque optimizer. Could you shortly explain that and, and maybe even show what that might look like? Yeah, sure. I'll kind of record this for us. So um, I've just kind of switched on the torque optimizer from... Uh, this end here so um, we'll send you the video so normally the, if you swing a golf club and we'll just move the torque optimizer to the top of the backswing the, the frontal plane which is what i've got here so it's the front camera view i suppose 
Uh, it, the torque optimizer gives me the ability to um, move the vertical force underneath the right foot and the vertical force underneath the left foot. And it allows me to angle the arrow. So the starting position here, I've got a player, I've got a skeleton position at the top of the backswing where he has a vertical force of 748 newtons. Okay, so that's, you could say that's his weight at this point, which would be 74.8 kilograms. Okay, so we're just dividing it by gravity and we'll use 10, just makes maths a little bit easier than doing the 9.81. Uh, because it creates this force and it's going through the center of mass currently, um, so there's no moment arm. The moment arm is the distance between the mass and the yellow line, which uh, people will see this, um, that vertical combined force, is there's no moment arm. So zero times 748 is zero. He has no torque. There's no rotation here. And on the frontal plane, the frontal plane rotation is helping the things that are moving more vertically in a golf swing, as well as things that are moving less, but kind of less important. So if you think the hand path and the club plane path they're working pretty vertically and of course more so in an iron. So you're going to use more frontal plane tool to move the club in the backswing and the downswing. So moving it up and down, that up and down movement you, you see in, in this particular view. Um, so if I apply, if I increase my vertical, and I'm doing that here on the, on the avatar, if I increase the vertical force underneath my lead side, then that moves the center of pressure more towards my left foot and that increases my moment arm. So on the avatar here, I've now got 24 centimeters. I haven't really changed the, the vertical force too much, okay, because I can lower the, the right foot down as I move more into the left. And because I've now got a moment arm, what's gonna happen is that my frontal plane torque is now gonna go from zero up higher. Okay, so it's the moment arm times the force equals the torque. And there's a, a, the equation for torque. You know, torque equals force times moment arm. And that's that distance that your uh, viewers will be able to see on the video you post a wee bit later. The other way of doing this is to try and push to the right and the ground reaction force, Newton's third law, it will push you to the left. And that will also increase your moment arm. So you have more leverage. Okay, and it's the same sort of thing, the idea of using a, a short spanner to undo a knot in a car tire when you have a puncture. And then you can add more leverage by adding a bigger moment arm by adding a bigger spanner. So you can apply less force to get the same result. And you find it easier to unscrew the nut on the tire. And the same thing is true in a golf swing. You can use the extra torque to just make things easier, or you can use the extra torque to swing faster. Very nice. Uh, I hope that was okay. Obviously, we'll, we'll, your, your uh, viewers will be able to watch that, as I say, uh, a little bit later. No, that's excellent. Thank you very much for sharing that, Steve. That's really great information. You know, with this type of technology, what type of speed gains can be achieved? Uh, it varies. and uh, I think you also, there's an element here of kind of, you, a player will need to to make really large gains. Um, I mean, if you consider Bryson Deschambeau, uh, who's been using our system with his coach, Chris Como, he's kind of moved from 125 miles an hour to 145 miles an hour club at speed. So that's a pretty big increase over a period of time. He's been getting his body used to swinging faster. And in his speed training, he looks as though he's, you know, for, you know almost overdoing it, throwing himself off his feet. Um, but then he has the ability then to back it off, getting to a certain um, sort of speed uh, uh, and play within himself. So he's playing within himself if he's swinging at 140, if he can top end his club head speed um, uh, at, at sort of one, 145, 147. And to, to answer your question, initially, I think if you've never used force blades before, you would really would the worst end you would probably see five miles an hour increase okay so probably looking more towards seven and a half eight miles an hour ball speed increase uh but then 
in some cases, when we do uh, our days, we, we see over 10 mile an hour increases in, in a very short space of time. For larger increases, it, it, it might take six months, okay, to, you know, to increase perhaps 20%. But initial gains, you, you'd be able to do that pretty easily. I think once you've had a go on force plates and you've kind of started to optimize these movements, it's actually very difficult and it needs a lot more work to do that. And of course, you have to look at other elements like strength, physical force in the body, which is muscle strength. And actually thinking about if you're going to add weight, which can be an advantage sometimes, the weight has to come from muscle force. It, it really doesn't want to come from just putting on more weight because if you put on more weight on its own and your muscle strength stays the same, you're going to move slower because it takes more force and more torque to move something that's heavier. Okay, so uh, that's something to think about as well. So, but for many golf coaches, you know, we don't have the opportunity to help. Uh, perhaps from a, a physical standpoint, uh, a player get faster. But you know, there's, there's certainly plenty of optimization you can do in a golf swing, and some of it's subtle to do with timing, and some of it's about increasing, you know, the the linear forces. Uh, but if you're applying them further away from the center of mass, then um, you can certainly do that easily that's wonderful now optimization is definitely one side of the spectrum how do ground reaction forces correlate with some of the most common swing faults well i, I think a good way to look at this i mean it, it, your uh viewers and viewers will um and listeners will think of now of right the, the swing faults that they've seen on video for example so let's say a golfer uh moves their move their hips too far to the right in the backswing. That's a big one. I mean, you, I, mean I think any coach would probably realize that if the, if the pelvis moves to the right way too far, things are going to get pretty tough from that position. It's certainly a mid to high handicap fault. Now, having a little bit of movement to the right with the pelvis, it's okay. It's when it starts to get excessive. So the movement to the right too far is actually created almost before you swing the club, and that's actually pushing um too much horizontal force towards the target and a great way to think about this is if i if you put your hands across your chest and the drill for your customers and then you get a, get a player to uh, jump to the right okay which would be moving the pelvis too far to the right um what you do first is you uh push to the left again we go back to that newton's first law so if you push to the left then you can move to the right just in the same way as if you push to the right, you can move to the left, but you can also use that push to the right to break yourself. So if you think about the jump, if you jump to the right, you'll push to the left and then jump. And then to stop yourself, okay, falling over, you actually push to the right and that stops the whole body traveling that way. So in a golf swing, the sway in the pelvis is created initially by a push to the left, but you can stop the push to the left, push the, the physical movement of the pelvis to the right by pushing to the right in the trail foot, and that stops this way. So that's a good thing to think about. And it reverse happens if you, in the downswing, with somebody who slides their pelvis too far towards the target, they pushed hard from the right, but then haven't resisted, you know by pushing to the left with the left foot. And so therefore the pelvis keeps traveling towards the target. That would be Newton's first law. Okay, so uh, so that's, a, that's one for just pelvis rotation. If you have um, a very low push towards your lead toe horizontally in the downswing, compared with what you're pushing back in the right foot, then you're likely to see the pelvis uh, translate and head towards your target line. And that's what we call in, in the trade as a, an early extension. So the way to remove an X early extension is to actually try and push more into the lead toe. And again, you could use a left footed hopping back exercise to do that. If you simply stood on your left leg and hop backwards, you'll get the feeling of pushing forward to hop back. Okay. So that's how I start people off to give them the right feel. I mean, I can certainly put my hands up and say 10 years ago, I would have tried to get somebody to just pull their left hip back. I wouldn't have told them to push towards their left toe and then push back. 
And that's what you really need to do. Because the force that creates the movement and a ground reaction force is always opposite to what you think it's going to be because it's equal and opposite, not the same. Very nice. There's a, there's a couple of small things, but common errors you see day to day in, in regular golfers. Absolutely. The, the hip sway to the right, uh, hips translating away from the target for a right-handed golfer is definitely one of the, the more common uh, swing faults. Now, Steve, last, last question for you. For golfers that may not have access to a force plate or a 3D force plate, uh, pressure plate or a 3D force plate, uh, what's one thing that, that they can do to begin to improve their understanding or application of these ground reaction forces? I think understanding that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, I think that's, the, that's an important sort of concept and something early on that I have to certainly get my head around when using ground reaction force. If you want to move in one direction, okay, you've got to push in the opposite direction. So, for example, if, if I'm stood next to a wall, okay, and I want to, I've got my hand against the wall, I push towards the wall, and then the reaction is I can then, it, it causes me to move away from the wall. If I want to jump up and create more vertical force, I push down. Okay, so you're always creating a force by a push, or a pull, in fact, but with golf mainly it's a push. I think, I think that's an important concept to have. With driver particularly, um, what I would say is that a, a real big advantage is to make sure that the stance is wide enough. You see so many players standing so narrow. Having a wider stance actually encourages what I call horizontal plane torque. So that's the same type of rotational force that you would see in a, in a child uh, being swung around on a, on a roundabout. You've got two forces, mom and dad moving the roundabout. Okay. And then the center of mass is fixed, of course, in a roundabout. But in a goal swing, it's the push forward on the left foot and the push back with the right. And the, but the wider stance, of course, just like a bigger roundabout, you would travel faster on a bigger roundabout than you would do on a smaller roundabout. So a nice, easy thing to increase pelvis rotation and torso rotation, uh, that part of a golf swing, then standing wider is an advantage. You can go too wide. So without having a force plate, you would just gradually widen the stance to where you feel it optimised your club head speed. And then if you go too far, you'd know it's your club head speed start to reduce because you can't apply the force. So that's one cool thing you can work on without having any technology around to try and find the optimum width of the stance for a player. Wow, that's great information, Steve. I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, sit and share your experience. This has definitely been a, an interesting year in golf with the introduction or the accessibility of this technology to uh, more and more players, especially top level players. For people looking to get more information about GASP systems or the 3D force plates, how can they reach out to you and stay in contact? So they can they can contact us through our website, which is www.gaspsystems.com. Uh, if they want to look at some videos, um, the, if you go to the bottom of our homepage, there's a Vimeo channel there. They can access some videos there. And, of course, they can follow us on Instagram um, uh, and Facebook. Uh, and, and, and look for information from users. Chris Como is always posting some great stuff. So is Mark Blackburn, Steve Furlonger. And we've got many other users uh, who post lots of content online. It's free education. So uh, and it, they can see how they're applying it to some of their players. So, uh, yeah, but perhaps the first port of call would be our website. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Steve. And uh, I look forward to seeing you very soon myself. Thank you very much. Look forward to it. Thank you, John, for inviting me. Thank you for listening. Please check back soon for the next episode.